is good to see y'all. I see that a lot of y'all are staring at my feet because I'm wearing something different on my shoes. So I will explain that in just a second. I left my Nikes out in the car. I usually wear <laughs> shoes like you do. But I'm wearing something special today because today it's a special occasion for me. So my name is Stephen Bell. You can call me Mr. Stephen. You can call me Mr. Bell, whatever you would like. I'm from the Lumbee tribe. Does anybody know what Lumbee is or anyone heard of the word Lumbee before? No? So it's a Native American tribe. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. But this is the state of North Carolina. Where? This is where we live right here. We live right here in this spot. So all these different what colors. Is what is it called? This is called North Carolina. I didn't know it's yeah, it's called North Carolina. So um, we live know. we live here, right? Yeah. And all these different colors represent the different tribes that exist. Um, They're kind of like different what, families. What is that yellow thing So the different colors represent different tribes. So the orange represents, this is the Okanichi tribe. Mm -hmm. The pink is the Saponi tribe. The Halawasaponi, the Meharan, the Kohari, the Lumbee, that's where my people are from, and then the Wakama Suwan. I don't know what those are. Yeah, that's okay. You might not have ever heard those words before. <laughs> um, and then the yellow represents, this is where cities are, where a lot of native people live, right? So that's where I am from. For today, to get us started, if you don't mind sharing with me, what is your favorite food? We're gonna go around and I want everybody to share with me. What is your favorite food? So again, my name is Mr. Steven or Mr. Bell. My favorite food is pizza. Mm -hmm. Who would like to go next? So, well, today, my friends, we're gonna be talking about two different stories in Native American culture. Now, you just told me some of your favorite food. We're gonna be reading about another type of food, right? For Native American culture, today we're gonna to talk about dancing, we're gonna talk about food. At the end, I'm gonna show you some things I brought from my house. Um, like jewelry and some books that we have as well. So all of those things are a way that we can celebrate Native American culture. Does anybody know what's significant about this month? Mm -hmm. This month is called Native American Heritage Month. So we get to celebrate Native American culture. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a feast, yeah. That's a way of celebrating, right? Mm -hmm. So different families have different ways of celebrating, right? Just kind of like you celebrate a birthday. Mom, I just had two birthdays. You just had two birthdays. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> That's, why didn't you invite me? <laughs> That's all right. Um, all right, so we're going to read this book called Fry Bread. This is a type of food that Native American families make, and it's a tradition that's been passed down from families to families. Okay? So, as you're reading it, I want you to think about, has anybody had fry bread before? No. Uh, I have. You have? So it's kind of like donuts, a little bit. It's kind. It can be sweet like donuts. Um, it's got bread in it. It You can put sugar on it, but you can also do it almost like a burger, like our friend over here likes. Um, you can put like meat and stuff in it. So we're going to read about how you make it and what it might look like. So each family, they're gonna make different type of fry bread depending on where they're from and what ingredients they like. So, fry bread is food. Flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe some sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Bless you. Fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough, flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove, the fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet, the bubbles sizzle and pop.
Fry bread is color. Golden brown, tan or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna or earth. Like, light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun. See them all eating their fry bread right here. Fry bread is flavor. Beans or soup, smell of tacos, cheese, and vegetables, delight in honey and jam, rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together, with family and friends. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history. The long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world with unknown food. We made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place. Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. Cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Now I'm getting ready to say some words that might be kind of confusing. These are all different tribes that I'm about to say. Do you remember what tribe I'm from? What tribe did I say that I'm from? Lumbee, right? Remember we talked about the tribes here? So these words are different tribes that I'm getting ready to say. So Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Oglala Sioux, Narangset, Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac and Fox, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, and west, brown, yellow, black, and white, familiar and foreign, old and new, we come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change, and survive. Fry bread is you. The end. Beautiful story. Thank you. So in that we were talking about some different ways of celebrating with food. What's a celebration? What do you like to eat when you're celebrating? It's the same way with fry bread and with different families. Sometimes we celebrate a little different way, right? Uh -huh. Right? Now, I want to show you some other food that you probably have had, but maybe have not seen this kind before. Do you know what this is? A corn. It's corn, right? Have you ever seen this kind of corn before? Yes. Yeah, you have? So, this is indigenous corn. This is, you see all these different colors here. And at the end, if you want to come up and you can, you can touch it, you can look at it. But this is how uh, corn used to grow all the time. Now, now it is traditionally more yellow or maybe like a white color or a cream color like you might see at the grocery store. But you can also, there's still a lot of people that do maybe, maybe green. Okay, um, not seen that one yet, but um, maybe. So there's different ways that, that corn grew. So, um, so I wanted to show you that since we're talking about. I want purple. I want purple. You want purple corn? Yeah. 
I don't think it tastes any different, but it's cool to look at, right? Yeah. yeah. So another way that we like to celebrate Native culture is through dancing. Has anybody heard of the word powwow before or been to a powwow before? Yeah. So I'm going to show you a quick video of what a powwow is. A powwow is essentially like a big gathering of Native people to celebrate our culture through dancing. So, if you noticed, oh, on every vacation. So, if you noticed, they weren't wearing a lot of the folks in the video. They weren't wearing clothes like you and I are wearing today. Oftentimes, people think that those are costumes, but those are actually called regalia. Can everybody repeat regalia for me? Regalia. 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 Excellent. Nice. So, those are really important pieces of clothing that we wear on special occasions, right? Now, if you notice, I told you about my moccasins earlier, right? My shoes, they're on my feet. Now, I actually made these for my cousin's wedding. So I wear these for very special occasions. Usually I wear shoes just like you all do, or sandals, right? So regalias are what we can wear if we're dancing or if we have a special occasion, maybe we have graduation. So this is one that I made um, for graduations as well. Now, this one I'm not wearing on my feet, but you can kind of see what it might look like. Now, these are two different styles you can see, right? So everybody can see in the back. So this kind, I have a winter style and a summer style. Is winter cold or hot? Cold. Cold. So which one do you think I would wear in the winter time? Cold. Which one do you think I would wear? Would I wear this one or would I wear this one? This one. This one? Who would think, if you think this one, raise your hand. If I'm wearing this in the cold, raise your hand. All right, hands down. If you think I'm going to wear this in the cold, put your hand up. All right, if you said this one, you're going to be correct. Why? Why would I wear this one in the cold but not this one? Because of Your legs might get cold, exactly. And this one is going to cover up some of my legs. Excellent thinking. I like that. So, yeah. So, yeah, I want to make sure that I'm safe and I'll make sure I'm warm, right? Everybody wants that, right? So, that's what I would wear for different occasions as well. Okay. So, if y'all are okay with it, I'm going to show you a quick example of how to do some powwow dance. So just keep your feet planted and you're just gonna bounce your feet just like this. Can you bounce your knees just like this? Just like this, yeah, nice, nice. Now, we're gonna start the music and you're gonna dance to the beat, right? So when you hear the drum, you're gonna listen out for it, okay? All right, yeah, Ready? then go ahead and start. Oh, 
drum. There you go. Nice. Nice. You're too tired. Start moving in a circle, okay? We're gonna move this way. You ready? Keep going, don't look at the TV. Listen out for the drum. Alright, we're switching, going this way. So next time, if you ever go to a powwow, um, you can say that you have dance, social dance. Um, parents, UNCG has a powwow in like March or April. Guilford Native has one in September every year. Totally open to everybody, so definitely check it out if you are available. Um, I think we've got time for one more story, right? Yeah, okay. So as I said, I am from the, which tribe? La, la. Lumbee. Lumbee. Lumbee, there you go. Nice job. So this book is specific to the Lumbee tribe. Remember, we have a lot of tribes that are here, um, that are here with us. Now, when I'm reading this story, it's called. Do you need to sit in a chair? Yeah, because my legs are Okay, that's all. So this is called. It's Lumbee Homecoming. Now, this word homecoming, has anybody visited someone in their family that they don't live with and they went to go visit somebody before? Yeah. yeah? So that's kind of like what a homecoming is. It's kind of like a gathering of a lot of people from your family, right? So it's a time for Lumbee people to all come together and celebrate and be together. So this is a book that is written by four, uh, I'm sorry, three Lumbee women and a Halawasa poem. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. What are you doing this weekend, Nakoma? asked Spencer. It was a hot July day, and Nakoma and Spencer were enjoying their summer day at the park. I'm going to my grandma's house, and we're spending the whole weekend together. We're going to Lumbee Homecoming. All I can think about is my grandma, golf carts, and grape ice cream. Good God, I can't wait. Nakoma couldn't hide his excitement. What's Lumbee homecoming? You've never been? Let me tell you about it, said Nakoma. Me and Grandma Etta wake up really early on Saturday for the parade. You want to make sure you have a good spot. We always get the same spot right in front of the church. You can see everything. My favorite part of the parade is the fire truck. They always give out the best camp. By the time the parade is over, it's really hot outside and Grandma Etta always wants a cup of lemonade. So we walk to the park and I can smell the food before we even get there. They have everything you could want. Grandma Etta always lets me get a cone of grape ice cream before lunch. We stand in line so that Grandma can have her collard sandwich, and I always get a funnel cake. There's never any seat, so we sit in the back of the golf cart, and Grandma talks to everyone that walks by. Grandma, golf cart, and grape ice cream. I can't wait. After lunch, we head to the road towards the sound of the drum. It's time for the powwow. The dancers fill the circle, and the new Miss Lumbee introduces herself. Her voice is strong, and it feels like she is fearless. Her regalia is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Her big silver crown shines for everyone to see. This is Miss Lumbee right here in her regalia. 
When we leave the powwow, it's time to ride to Uncle Jerry, who picks us up on the golf cart and we cruise, waving to everyone we see. Before I know it, it's time to make one more pit stop for my last cone of great ice cream for the day. We park our golf cart at the park, and the first boom lets me know the fireworks have started. Grandma always pulls me in close, and Uncle Jerry smiles. Grandma, golf carts, and great ice cream. I can't wait. This weekend's going to be a good one. It's Lumby Homecoming. The end. Yay. Grape ice cream sounds so good. Grape ice cream. It is really good. Yeah, you should try it. Um, McDonald's actually it? down there actually sells really? it. Really? Yeah, because it's so popular. So the last thing I wanted to share with y'all before I give you some coloring sheets um, and we head home, I wanted to share a couple of things I brought from my home. So one of the things is we celebrate Native history and Native culture is we also wear it through, uh, celebrate through a lot of our artwork and a lot of our jewelry. So some of these I made, um, I'm gonna try to hold up as much as you can. So you can see these are small, tiny beads that again, you can come up and see um, at the end. So the ones that, I'm, that I have right here and they're on my moccasins are all made out of small, tiny beads that were sewn together. And you see that in a lot of people's regalia as well. Um, this one, does anybody know what this is made of? Yeah. What is it made of? Blocks. Not beads. Blocks. Beans. Bean, close. Beans. Beans. Not beans. Corn. Corn, right? Yeah, so what we had to do is, so that the corn would be soft enough, we had to soak it in water and then, um, and then we made it that way, and then it hardens up. So these are actually really hard right now, but this is this is corn. If you look at it really close, you can see the individual corn kernels. Yeah, if you come up afterwards, you can see it. Um, this one, so I'm not a musician, but this is one of our native flutes. So I'll play a couple notes, but I'm not a musician. Um, and then, let's see, I think the last thing I've got is pottery as well. So this is, um, this is what we actually used. This is a seed pot. So we would put individual seeds inside this pot. And then we would pray over them and bless them so that they would grow and they would be really strong and that they would grow healthy fruits and vegetables for our people. And then we would use that to help plant as well. So this is a little more decorative. I don't use it to plant because I'm not that good at that. But... Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, you're also welcome to check out some of these books. Um, and I think y'all have got a display over there yes. as well. 